Welcome to lesson number two. Here we're going to look into what edge detection is all about. So the first step is to go ahead and import OpenCV. So OpenCV can take care of all our manipulations, image manipulations that we're going to do right now. And we have this image, which is right under this directory. If you go into OpenCV tutorial, you have this images folder and under images folder, you have this image color.jpg. So we'll work with that image today. We will say, Hey, OpenCV, I want to read this image. I want to save this in this variable called image. So image is equal to CV2 IM read. And you need to tell OpenCV what is the image file path. So in our case, we saw that it was under the images folder and it's called color.jpg. So that is the file path for us. We just go ahead and write down the image path name. Which is under images bracket and just specify what is there after the slash and you say color dot jpeg you are now specifying what is the color image that you want to read once you have this if you want to just simply display it you can use cv2 im show and that's how you display it but since we are not able to use we are using the collab version we cannot directly use cv2.im show and for that purpose we will import something called as or from google google has this batch that created in order for us to use the cv2im im show we will use google collab dot patches import cv2im show so we are just importing cv2im show and we will say, hey, CV2 IM show, please display the image for us. We just specify the image. And if we run this, it will display the image for us right here in the browser. We can see our colorful image is right up and running for us. Now, let's understand, let's go into the edge detection. So we have this image. You know, let's for now we'll comment it. Now let's make it into a canny image. So we say can image and this can image is nothing but the edge detected image we're going to be using a edge detector called can edge detector we are going to be using this function from opencv which says hey opencv cv2 please do the can edge detection on my image so opencv has this function called can we you just need to specify what is the image Okay, I have the image. The canny edge detection also requires you to specify the size of the filter that you're going to be using. So the filter size in our case will specify, hey, let's go to be 150 by 200. It doesn't matter what filter you're using. You can always test it out and see what kind of a result are you getting. So it, there's no hard and fast rule behind the 150 and 200, which I mentioned here. You can always test it out and see. And now we can simply display this. But before we display, there is an issue. Canny image does not run, does not run by its own. It needs to run on a grayscale image. Like the grayscale image that we learned in the previous lesson, where we were converting the grayscale using the color BGR to gray, we need to convert our image into a grayscale image before we do anything. So let's copy this. Let's copy this line from here and come back to our canny edge detection. Now we know what is the purpose, what is what is one of the uses of grayscale image. We save this here and we convert our image into a gray image and we specify the gray image to canny because canny is only able to, to work on grayscale image. It only assumes that the image has one channel. And for that purpose, we need to make sure you're only providing one channel grayscale images. And let's see how this image runs out to be. So now you can see the whole image is gone and it's only specifying the edge profiles of the image. Isn't that amazing? And that is what the canny edge detection is capable of. But there are a few more adjectives, there are a few more things that we can do with this. We have the canny image and it has it's able to detect all the linings, able to detect everything, all the edges that are available in the image. 
But say we were not interested in everything. We were only interested in the highlighting features of the image because right now it's very difficult to understand what this object is even about. So we can use some filtering methods. And for that purpose, let's import NumPy. Import NumPy as NP. And NumPy is our brother to OpenCV who is able to do some matrix manipulations for us, which is also very, very much similar to what OpenCV does. In fact, N NP can also be uh, another format of OpenCV because it also works with matrices. But OpenCV has already made very things very easy for us. So we are not going to ditch it. We're going to use it simply and run our application with the help of OpenCV. Now you have NP. The next step we're going to look into and understand erosion and dilation. So we'll say erosion and dilation right here. So let's first do erosion of our image. Now we can yeah, do erosion by saying, hey, erode my image. Which image? The canny image. And erode it so that you can remove some of the filters that I'm not interested in. Erode the image by using OpenCV's erode function. And this erode function is capable of taking your image, which is the canny image. You have the canny underscore image, but it also needs for you to specify a window size because this window is going to move over your image and wherever that window matches or falls into the property of erode, it will eradicate it. Oh, you know what? I just found my mistake. So I missed the E over there. And we are also needed to specify the window size, which is also called as the kernel. The kernel equal to NP, since we are going to be using NumPy to create our matrix, and then kernel is a small window, a small matrix. So, and it's going to be a matrix of ones, and we'll give it a size of maybe five by five, and we'll say NP is of unsigned integer of bit size eight. But that's basically specifying what our image is going to be looking like. And this five is based, five by five is nothing but the tuple, so it should be under brackets. And you have your kernel defined right here. We use the kernel into our erosion format. So we say kernel, and it can also take, you can move the window over the image multiple times. Right now, we're just interested in one time, so we'll say iterations equal to one. So erosion, going back to the function, there are a few things happening. So the erosion function is able to take the image that you're interested in. It also needs the kernel, and it also needs the number of iterations you are going to specify it. So let's display this image as well. PV2 IM show erode image. So let's do erode image and now run this. So we are going to run this image and for some reason we're getting an error and the error for here it says that as a substitution consider cv2 underscore i am show and we as a user of open cv on a desktop we use the dot i am show function let's convert that into the underscore and let's run this and you have a new image which is which has nothing which basically eroded everything so let's reduce the kernel size and say two by two. And let's see what kind of a result we will get. So it has some information. You can see some dots available. So of course, it's taking out most of the information. And now you might ask, why do we, why do we even need to do this? Because it's, it's taking out all the information that is available in our image. Let's make it by one by one and see if it can display some more information. Yes, it's displaying a little bit of more information, but if you compare it with the previous image, there's not much of a difference. And it makes um, us think or doubt ourselves about why do we even use erosion? Well, erosion is used in order to reduce the noise level in the images. And it also comes and it's very much useful when we are when we can pair it with dilation. So let's look into what dilation is. Dilation is nothing but the 
opposite of erosion. So let's go into dilation. Uh, let's uh, maybe comment this out for now. And we say this is erosion. And this is going to be dilation. So dilation also needs the kernel. Yes. So we can put maybe the kernel on the edge side. So we will put the kernel right before everything. So it's the main guy because it uses it uses both erosion and dilation. So we'll have kernel in both. Now we say, hey, dilated image. Use OpenCV's dilate function. Dilate and use your can image. Let me move this out of the way. So you, you're using OpenCV's dilate function, and it also requires the kernel that we created. The kernel, and we also use the iterations equal to one. So what we did is we're using the dilate function, which is very similar to what the erosion function is. Now we are using it again on the canning image. We are making the kernel, we are making use of the same kernel, and we are using iterations of one by one. Let's see what we can get if we have the kernel size of five by five. And let's display this for us. I am show open CV dilate image. Let's run this. And if we can see this is the any canny edge detection image, and this is the dilated image. So what is happening here? You can see that the edges or all the edges that were visible here, now they have been emphasized. They are made more, they are increased, or you can say dilated. They become very big now. Now, if we were to use erosion after dilation, Let's uh, let me remove this kernel. We don't need the kernel, or we can keep it for your purpose. That's fine. And let's do erosion after dilation. So we have your dilated image, and we'll use the dilated image instead of the canny image, and then display our eroded image. So let's run this. So you have for the original canny image again. Then you have going down. You have your dilated image, and now you have your eroded image. So you can see there's a difference between the canny edge image and the eroded image. So there's a little bit of doubt, doubts here. So if we increase, uh, let's see what else we can do to make it more simpler for us to understand. So we have the canny image and the eroded image. We are basically converting, we are basically uh, making uh, or displaying them one after the other what if we do it horizontally stacked so we have this np dot head stack we use display this is the image that is going to be displayed and numpy has this function called hedge stack and hedge stack is going to take three values and our values are the can image we have the dilated image and we have the eroded image so we use all these display images and we say cv2 im show display this image instead of displaying the eroded image instead of displaying the dilated image instead of displaying the canning image altogether we will display all of them under one horizontally stacked so we just run this and we can see all the three images right here in front of us so you can easily compare what is happening through the original canny image. The edge detected image has made it dilated, so it becomes big. And now you're eroding some parts of it so that it can become more and more visible. And you're just trying to basically erode some of the more abundant information available here. So this is more about erosion and dilation. And the number of the number one use of canny edge detection with use of erosion and dilation is in the process of making lane detection application. So you, you have a row, you have a picture of a road or you have a video of a road and you are interested in understanding where the lanes are available. And for that purpose, you want to use the line detection, the edge detection, and then provide dilation and erosion if, you, if there are any kind of noise you want to remove. 
So the erosion and dilation is nothing but to use or work with noise for our purpose. And uh, that helps us, that helps us in making the image more visible so that you're not uh, focusing on the unnecessary information, but focusing on what we need. Maybe it could be the edges, maybe it could be a certain region within the image. So you can specify your filter size and then focus on the area that you are interested in. 